Hi, it's Nell. And yes, I'm hanging out with my string of pearls again because I thought we all love string of pearls. It's a very, very popular plant. And I haven't done a video in a while about how I prune it and how I propagate it. So I thought I would do an updated video for you and post on propagating string of pearls. Because the last time I did a video on propagating string of pearls, I was selling the cuttings and that was a while ago. So I thought time for an updated one. And this is how I like to do it. And I think that most people do. So I think you'll find it to be an easy way to propagate them if you follow this. Now my string of pearls grew outdoors in Santa Barbara. I, I also grew a couple indoors too but they mainly grew outdoors and my string of pearls is growing outdoors here in Tucson. And I don't want it to get too much longer. It's about 28 inches long. I don't want it to get too much longer because the wind comes through and these stems are pretty thin. So I don't want them to get like the string of hearts where they're all crazy, crazy, crazy tangled. So I'm going to keep it probably at about this uh, length. I was going to say height <laughs> at this length here. What happens when you prune them is, let's see if I can find one. Oh, here. It was pruned here and they fork off. So there's one, two, three stems coming off of here. And then the, this one has like three stems coming off of it. And this one's going to have one stem coming off it. So if it has been cut, they can get kind of heavy and globby and pull the plant down so um i don't want i don't want that to happen and also too it's very hot and dry here in the desert so i want to keep this plant in as good a health as possible now one of my string of pearls in santa barbara got to be it was almost five feet long and that's how they get on the coast there san diego has some beautiful string of pearls too but here it's not the optimum, optimum climate. It's not bad, but it's not optimum. So I, do, I don't want them to get too long because what happens, which you will see in the next clip, um, it's the dryness factor too, is the top of the stems will get dry and then the pearls start to look a little sad. And here are those dry tops right there, the tops of the stems. So. I'm just going to cut them off, but you can see how these pearls aren't quite as round and quite as plump as the other ones. But these stems are so thin and they dry out really fast and they also get overwatered and sometimes just the, the weight of the stems, if they get really long, will do it too. So when to prune and propagate this plant? Spring, summer are the best. If you live in a warm, warm climate like I do, early fall is okay, early, early fall or on the coast of California too, but spring and summer are the best. So now I'm gonna show you how I take a cutting and either floral nips, hopefully these focus in, I don't have my flip screen out or a sharp pair of scissors are just fine. I find these are easier to use than my big old Felcos. So uh, I, I will also leave pictures of them in the blog if that didn't show up. Okay, so I'm going to do this one here because it is forking off. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this big long one off right like that. And I have some more cuttings over on my work table too. So um, that's about all you do to take the cutting. And I'm gonna take one more cutting. This one has a bunch going on here too. So, oh, I'm gonna take two actually. I'm gonna take this one and then I'm gonna take, where is it? I'm going to cut this 
one right about here. Oh, oh wait, I can go. This one has a, a funny stem on it. Okay. I'm going to take that one there. And that gives me enough cuttings for what I want to do today. Okay, so we're over at the old work table, which is actually just a pocket door on, on two sawhorses. <laughs> and these are the cuttings I just took. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break them down even a little bit more. Cut that one off there. I'm going to trim that one a little bit there to take off this. And, and you can kind of clean them up. So that gives another cutting there. That one's fine. This one's fine. I'm going to cut off just those dead ends. And then I'm going to cut off this here. And that's how I always get so many cuttings off a string of pearls is because they fork. <laughs> so uh, well, let's see. And indoors, if you grow your string of pearls indoors and you're propagating it, um, you don't really have to be concerned about the weight part because you don't get the wind in indoors. But uh, you still you still don't don't want to propagate them in the winter even if they're indoors because that's the time that the plant is at 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 rest so just uh do it uh in the warmer months all right so these are all ready to go except for a couple of steps so these as you saw i just i just took so I need to let them heal over for a day. And what healing over means is just exposed to air because these stems, you want the stems to heal over. I was just touching up a pot with some purple spray paint. That's what that is. <laughs> that is the, the next video. Anyway, so you want them to just uh, heal over. Think of it like a scab healing over. And I'm only gonna let them heal over for a day because I'm someplace very, very hot, but you can let them heal over for anywhere from one to three days. On other succulents can go much longer. I've gone up to nine months on healing some succulents over, but because these stems are so thin, you don't want to let them go for more than three days. So I'm going to get these in the house in my utility room where it's cooler in there, still bright, and they can do their thing. And then I will just plant them in tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so here are the cuttings that I took yesterday that you saw in the clip and they are healed over. These have the stems, uh, the pearls, the pearls removed. Excuse me, it's like 105 today. <laughs> summer has hit here in Tucson, even though it's not quite summer yet. So if I say something really crazier than usual, it's the heat. <laughs> so um, I think I'm going to take off one more pearl. And you can also propagate the pearls too. But I am usually way too imp impatient for that. So I just do the stem cuttings. And this one, I haven't cut the pearls off yet. So I'm just going to cut them off. And I had one viewer say that he just leaves the pearls on and propagates them that way. But how I learned propagation is you take the leaves off so I just do it I don't know if it makes any difference at all because I haven't tried it that way oh I think I'm going to cut this off but if you if you leave the pearls on too let us know I think I'm going to take off this one too because these are a little bit on, on the longer side they, this is heavy here oops come away come here you runaway pearl so now we are going to get to putting them in the mix. So I'm just going to focus on in because these cuttings aren't too big. So that way, oh, I don't think I'm even, even going to put, put my gloves on. Okay, so I already have a few odds and ends of cuttings in here. Um, obviously, string of bananas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the string of bananas and the burrow's tail in here 
because I'm going to be propagating more string of bananas to fill out that purple pot that I took the string of pearls cuttings out of. I want to fill out that pot with um, string of pearls and string of uh, bananas, but because string of bananas grows faster, I'm going to do more string of bananas. But So I'm going to de dedicate this to just the string of pearls. But let's see if this one, this one I planted like, I think about two or three weeks ago. And let's see if it's got any root action on it yet. Oh, it's got just one start there starting there. So if this one is it, going to go back in here. And I'm just going to top this pot off with a little bit more succulent and cactus mix. So I wanted to show you that string of bananas because I've done a few posts on string of bananas and string of pearls recently. And I just wanted to show that not only does the string of bananas grow faster, but it also propagates faster. But uh, because that one just has a tiny little one coming out there. And I, I put them in there at the same time. And now what this is, is it is straight succulent and cactus mix. You can also use a uh, a propagation mix. There are propagation mixes, but because I always have succulent and cactus mix because I have so many of them, I just use that. You want something that's nice, light, chunky, that those roots can easily form and grow out of. So, just going to put these in. I'm, I must say it's a little, a little bit easier with the chopstick. And you want to get two or three nodes down in. You want to get at least the mix up to about here. And I've taken string of pearls cuttings that were this long. I don't, I don't take them in any shorter because mine get, you know, fairly long. And I've also taken them and, and propagated them when they're over a foot long. And I said, as I said, you can also propagate them from the pearls. But this is all about stem cuttings. And that's all you do. And I usually put them into dry mix. This just happens to be a bit wet because I've had things rooting in here. So it's a little bit more on the moist side. So I'm just going to get these in here. And this one I brought, it's, it's called the floral pin for because this one, actually I might save it for this one because it has a little bit of weight at the bottom and this just holds the cuttings into the loose mix. So with these slightly heavier ones, I just work the little trowel into here or, or chopstick, or you could use a, a pencil too. And then I kind of pull it back so that it creates the space for this very thin stem to go into. That's the issue with these is their stems are so thin that they've got no, no, shall we say poking power. <laughs> so I am good. I am going to pin this one down and it's just going to hold it in, in the, in the mix. And I've left some room here because I am going to be doing some more cuttings. So what I usually do is I let these settle in dry for anywhere from two to five days. Here it'll probably be more like two to three because it is warm. And then I thoroughly water them. So how I care for these when they're rooting is really simple. I put them someplace that has nice, bright, natural light, but no direct sun because they don't have any roots. You don't want them to burn. Don't, don't put them in a hot, sunny window. Um, so I put them in my utility room. It has a skylight. It has beautiful bright light in there, but nothing direct. And I will water them probably every, probably every week. You don't want to keep them too wet, but you don't want to let them dry out either. And also too, the stems are only about down to here. So the first, the first watering, I will thoroughly water the, water the mix through. And then the subsequent uh, waterings, I'll probably give it about half a cup because it just needs to be the top part of the soil. So you want them to be moist, but not socking, sopping, socking wet. Excuse me, I have sweat dripping in my eye. 
<laughs> it's the first time that I filmed outside that it's been really hot. When the heat comes around, it's always just like, whew, you know, the first few days are just like, whew. so um, you, you don't want them to be soaking wet. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention in about three or four weeks, they should, should, be, should be rooted and then you can plant them after that. Um, they, they might take a little bit longer for you. You can just sort of do the pull test and see if they feel as though there's some resistance. If that doesn't work, then you can always, you can always dig them up, dig them up, just sort of, you know, take a spoon or something and get them out and see if the roots are formed because you can then, then you can easily plant them back in. It's okay if you you know, if you do that, it's not going to hurt the cuttings at all. It's about four and a half days later, and I just wanted to show you I got the rest of the cuttings planted in. I've, I've also watered them, and as you can see, I planted them fairly close. But that's okay, because when I go to transplant these into that hanging pot, I'm going to do it in either pairs or trios, because they can grow they can grow really close and that's how they grow in their pots anyway so don't uh don't be afraid to put them close you can put you can you can put quite a few in a pot i have done quite a few videos on string of pearls and succulents so i will leave the links to probably three of my string of pearls post some videos down below and I will also leave the link to our succulents category on our website joyousgarden.com. So see propagating string of pearls is a snap. Just a few things to know. You want to use a light chunky mix that way it doesn't stay too waterlogged. You don't want to keep it too wet or too dry or you don't want to keep it in an exposure that's too dark or too highlight a nice so for all you string of pearls fans out there like me i hope you have found this video to be helpful and please come back because i have a lot more videos coming your way and i thank you for all your likes and your subscribes i appreciate them now let's get out in our gardens any garden into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place i thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video Bye.